。好的，这里是第十三届中国航展，我们继续给大家带来第三天的精彩的飞行表演。现场呢，和我一起解说的仍然是军事专家王明志。Mr. Wang Mingzhi is with us, a military expert, and now we are seeing three jets already in the air. We can hear the roaring sound. This is the second batch. They are going to take off in three groups, and this is the second group, one single airplane. There are three different forms of taking off, some in one single plane, some in pairs, and some in three. And there will be big elevation. That means the plane could take off at the fastest speed. And in taking off, we give top priority to taking off in the shortest time in the largest number. That shows the fighting capacity in the battlefield, particularly in danger. The planes must be able to rise up to the sky the quickest. Now, this is one pair already taken off. You see, one plane is rising up very quickly with a big elevation. And the load on the pilot is very big to about nine. And that's very challenging. It's trying to get as high as possible so as to dive into the fight. Now this one single plane has separated from the others. Today the weather is not perfect in Zhuhai. The visibility is poor. Moisture content is big in the air today. But for the on-site spectators, their experience is much better than our viewers in front of the screen. Now this one plane will have to converge with the other members. And this is the first show for the fleet. The second show is about the show of six planes. So the first move was taking off, and the second one is about uh, six planes in one fleet. And then there will be a series of uh, very fanciful moves for all the six planes. So there are four different sessions for this fleet. The first session is already behind us. And now, this is the second part. Six planes are getting together, and their speed difference must be about 200. They have to be very accurate. So now they are about to begin the second session of their performance. So the distance keeping between two planes is really delicate because it's at very high altitude and it's about six planes in the fleet. They have to be very accurate in controlling the distance between each other. Now pulling smoke. The main color is in white, but since today, it's a very special day. It's the commemoration day for the martyrs. So they are pulling the white smoke to pay tribute to those martyrs who have sacrificed for their motherland. We have seen colorful smoke in the first two days of the show, like in blue, white, and red. But today, it's blank. It's in white, so as to echo our tribute and our honor of those martyrs. And the, they are paying their tribute to our heroes in their special form. The number two plane has changed its position, and now it's in a rhombus shape. Mm. 
Just now, we saw the smoke to pay tribute to the martyrs and to send greetings to the spectators. And now the Rambas fleet is showing us some movements. They are rising up together. It's a beautiful angle from here. Still, the main color is white. It's very speedy, up and down. For the pilots, such quick up and down is very demanding for the physical conditions. It's really a test of speed and power. So as to present us such a feat of the eyes, as we have talked, there is a long training period for the pilots so as to make them as technical as possible. And usually the average lifespan for their career is about 50 years long, starting from 20 years old. So that means they could work until 70. That's pretty good. And we really treasure such human resources, their talents for the nation. And since the August 1st fleet has been established, they have uh, given us a lot of performances and today they are using the J-10 jets, and the growth of the August 1st fleet is actually a witness of the Air Force China development from the first generation to the third generation. We have witnessed the development of Air Force China. And what are we seeing now, Mr. Wang? After pulling smoke, they're going to have a somersault. What's the difficult point of somersaults? At very low altitude, they have to have the maximum angle at 200 degrees, and then in a fleet, they're going to leave a trajectory altogether in harmony. As you can see, they are right now hiding behind the clouds. It's a very beautiful curve that they have left behind. Our photographer has taken a very complete image of the circle they drawn. It's a meaningful shot. Since today is the Martyr's Day, even the clouds are in special colors. And Air Force is truly honoring our heroes in this special way. According to Mr. Wang, J-10 is generation number three. And according to my knowledge, only China, Russia, and the U.S. have self-developed to generation three J-10 planes. And before their performance, what usually do they have to do? All of those pilots are come from the combat regiments. They are not just the performers for the show. They all have the actual combat capabilities. So we selected some of the most excellent ones from those combat pilots to join the August 1st performance fleet. That's really a high honor for the pilots, because after all, this is a national level name card of Air Force China. So to be a member of this team it's really a sacred honor for those uh, pilots. The airplane seemed to have disappeared for some time. What is this shape? This is now in the sparrow shape. And later on, they are going to have a horizontal roll together, pulling smoke. It happens very quickly. So who gave the order for their movement? The chief airplane and uh, the commander on the land will communicate together. 
because they have to roll all together with very high density. So they need some coordination. And they need confidence in each other. Such confidence comes from years of practices. Now they have changed position as well. After a turn, they will be the last movement for the six planes. They're going to flower in groups. What's the parameters for that flowering movement? The flowering movement is aimed at uh, giving a fit of the eyes because they need very accurate control of the angles. Now they're taking a turn. Between two moves, the fleet has to quickly readjust their positions. Still pulling smoke. They have separated four plus two and now crossing by each other and then flowering. So in two teams, four plus two. So that's about the second part of this show. The second part is composed of six planes. And then there will be some performances in groups. There will be the dashing of two airplanes. Those two are repositioning themselves and they are about to dash towards each other. Very beautiful move. They are flying at about uh, 700 kilometers per hour. So by putting them together, the relative speed is about 1,400 kilometers per hour for the two planes. So that's uh, really something. And uh, after watching the two airplanes dashing towards each other, they will have a fleet of four airplanes to give us performances. And these remaining two airplanes will get prepared. Here come the four. So they have very stringent uh, plan about uh, which airplane is doing what. Now this is a horizontal roll. Compared to the previous rows of six planes, each airplane accomplished the move on themselves. But now these four airplanes are rolling on one plane. So the four airplanes are quite coordinated. That is very demanding. For them to keep on the same plane, they need harmony and coordination. And now you see the second airplane is rolling around the first one. It follows very closely the first airplane. So the two pilots must be very precise in coordination and control. So there are so many moves for even just two planes. It looks beautiful in a fleet, and it also looks awesome in two. So number five, number six, roll together. And next, there will be one single plane for the show. We could feel distinctly that the plane is almost flying above our showroom and we can feel the vibration. And the roar is loud. It turns for twice in a row. Flying up 
in a vertical direction. It feels like it's uh, taking a half somersault. Yes, you're right. And then take a turn. And now it's in the right position and ready to hover. And then accelerate to hover. It's like a brush painting in the air. For single plane performance, it has to show the strong dynamics. And there are a lot of movements. All of those movements are very consistent. And now a horizontal roll and dashing. All of those are of combat value. For example, accelerate to hover, the half somersault, all of those moves are quite uh, helpful in the real combat. Now this is a show of four planes, they are hovering. It's also of combat value. It allows uh, several airplanes to accomplish uh, such a uh, movement altogether and when needed they can directly get into a combat against the enemies so those are not just a show they could be accepted in a real battlefield as you said for single plane performance and several planes performance the difference is about uh, the overall performance and coordination now it's an oblique uh, somersault. They need to have an angle against the ground. And during the somersault, they could also have a quick elevation. Single plane is doing the show on its own. You could see it's very agile and speedy. It's horizontal rolls. During the rolls, if you pay attention, it rolled for like four circles. That requires the pilot to have very strong sense of localization. So don't get dizzy in the rolls. And after the rolls, they have to quickly readjust themselves to the level direction. And I'm very confident over our pilots, they're not going to get dizzy. Another one plane is flying towards us. It's getting closer. And there was a pause before the horizontal roll. After rolling for 90 degrees, it paused for a short time period. And that shows the accurate controlling capacity of the pilots. That's the rhythm it, he or she has to work on. With that pause, it's really a test of their controlling capacity. You need to be able to turn and stop and then turn again. So controlling the airplanes, it relies a lot on the dynamics of the air. It's very difficult to just pause it for one second. And again, an horizontal fleet is flying in an orderly fashion right above the spectator's platform. The horizontal fleet is also a typical formation in the combat. In a battlefield, such a horizontal fleet will allow a very large distance between two jets. Just now, the distance was small, just for the spectator's views. It looks better. So in a combat, there will be some different designs than in a show, and such details are all serving the need of the combats. Now this is single plane at uh, lower speed, slower speed. Just now we saw one single plane to show us the speed of it, but now it is showing us the small speed. It's showing the speed on the left edge, and it's very silent. 
that shows excellent performance of the plane. So there are a lot of stories, even behind a very quiet flight. Now four planes are in our sight. Flowering upwards against the clouds, we can see a complete curve, and then they are going to flower upwards with a white smoke. It's like a white flower blossoming. That's another tribute to our martyrs. So, with the special etiquette of the Air Force China, we are showing our honor to those uh, martyrs who sacrificed for China. And now, this plane seems to be at ease, flying steadily and slowly, and it really requires the techniques of the pilot, and it has to turn and roll again and again, and in the meantime, it changes position. It's a very consistent movement, and uh, in the real combat, such a movement can allow the airplane to get rid of the enemies chasing after it. So for every and each of such movements, they have some combat value. Again, as I said, the pilots are capable of a real combat. After this single plane performance, the remaining five will join it. So they have a sequence. The spectators always have something to look at. After this plane, it's going to wait, and then the other five will enter the scene. And what's next after the five? I think it's uh, six of them all together. This is my third day, but I still find such a performance very eye-catching, particularly listening to your explanation. I do find this show very exciting, especially since today's uh, extraordinary day. We are using this show to pay our honor to the martyrs. Air Force is doing its job for the martyrs who sacrificed. So there are some static exhibition and some uh, performances on the move. But I have to say those on the move are most eye-catching. And if you're on the site, even the roar can overwhelm you. That's um, incomparative. It's a combination of speed and power. It's really a feast of the eyes. And as you said, there are some movements, and those movements contain a lot of aesthetic elements. Next time, if I see the performances, they are not just for the performance only. They are actually drawn from the combat experience. Even though it's only a short time for the performance, the pilots are under huge pressure. While we are waiting, we're not sure where those airplanes are. They must be readjusting their positions somewhere. And let's just uh, wait and see. Here they come after readjusting positions. Now five of them are flying towards us. They are going to have a horizontal flower. That's really the killer move. Towards different directions. Beautiful curves behind them.
It's really something to appreciate. At this moment, that's about all of uh, the fleet movements. And then there will be three other moves. Number six they're playing is going to elevate and then take a back and land. That's the quickest move to land. While it's backing, the undercart will be extended and then it will land. So quick taking off and quick landing are both challenging and are both required in a real battlefield. Yes, indeed. Now it's landing very steadily, a beautiful move. When you were thinking that it still has something to show us in the air, it's already on the land. Now it's decelerating. Among the six planes in the fleet, this is the first one to land. So after putting off the undercart, it lands directly. And then this is a pair landing together. So what's the point of this pair landing? Usually we see only one plane landing on its own, but now when there are more than one airplane, to shorten the time, the two airplanes could manage even quicker landing. You see, those two are very steady in the landing. And it happens simultaneously for the two. It's a beautiful move. For the air show, it's more than just the techniques. It's also about aesthetics, the combination of the speed and power. And then three airplanes, they are going to separate and then within the shortest time land together. Pay attention, the first one elevate, turns, and then the second airplane separate from the fleet, and within the shortest time, it rolls and land. For one single airplane, after elevate and turn and land, and then the pair and a group of three can accomplish the steady landing as well. So even in different uh, fleets, the pilots are able to land very steadily. That's another combat capability. They are very technical. This airplane will join a fleet of five and land. In a real combat, those airplanes are all able to land very quickly because they can accomplish the turns, the rolls, and the landing in a very short air route. And that's about the end of uh, those several pilots. Three turns. And then getting to the air route, and then prepare to land. Wonderful. The August 1st uh, performance fleet is given us a very excellent performance and a tribute to the martyrs with their awesome performance and their combat capabilities. They are truly an honor. So the airplanes from this fleet are landing and let's watch a playback.
you have seen. Those airplanes are already landing and we would love to interview the spectators. From CMG, are you here for this air show? Of course. And what's your feeling right now? The J-10 jets are having a very roaring engine and it impressed me. And where are you coming from? I used to study in the United Kingdom and after coming back to China, I've been in the robotics business and today I'm coming from Shenzhen for this show. I, ha I am. Are you actually an exhibitor? Technically, not, not really, but I'm a partner. Is this your first time in air show? Yes. And what's the most impressive thing? I think it's about uh, the roaring sound of the engines on the opening day. It's different thing to hear this on the site than before a TV. It's like the whole world is torn apart by this engine. And uh, it's after all an independently developed engine. And I'm really proud of that. Thank you. Can I interview you? Are you from the media? No, I'm just a spectator for this show. And uh, were you here just now? Yes. I've been here two days. What's your feeling? Impressive. This is the first time for me to watch the show in such a close distance. Where are you coming from? Shanghai. So you fly specifically from Shanghai to watch this? Our company is an exhibitor. So you are part of the exhibition and also spectators. And I see you bring a lot of uh, instruments. How many photos have you taken? 3,000. Could you show us some? This photo is about landing. I took a lot of them. So 3,000 photos in two days' time. Which one is your favorite? It's about uh, yesterday, the Hongying fleet. The flowering yesterday was really beautiful. Since this is your first time, what's the most impressive thing? I'm in the military industry. Since the start of my career, China's military power was different from right now. So with China's independently developed equipment, we could offer such a feast of the eyes on this air show. This is really something. And from that angle, China has grown more stronger and powerful. There are so many big enterprises in China for this show. And with uh, the joint efforts of those big enterprises, we are able to be a world-leading power in the world. In the next several days, when the show is open to the public, what's going to be your recommendation to the public? The radar system is really our pride. There is one exhibition pavilion and uh, since I'm from CETC, we have our own radar system. It's really a world-class product. I recommend you to have a look. Tomorrow is the National Day holiday. Do you want to leave some words? I want to give my best wishes to our motherland. Thank you. Now let's move on. The ladies are quite shy. May I interview Yi from CCTV? Are you, since you are here for the show, what's your feeling right now? 
I'm really excited. My company is one of the suppliers, and I am from the science field, so I'm really proud. Technologies are the results of our efforts, including all of those researchers, technicians, and workers in the front line. I'm really proud of all of us. Is this your first time here? Yes, for me, it's the first time, but I think um, my company has paid visits here a lot. So what's the most impressive thing to you today? I haven't uh, toured indoors yet. I know there are a lot of equipment, and I'm overwhelmed. Those equipment th seem to be very remote from me. I could only see them during the national parade, but uh, today I see all of them. Previously, we know only part of uh, the show, and we have to be confidential. But today, because of my job, I saw the entire performance, and I'm really pleased. Where do you come from, Shenzhen? You must have a pavilion. There will be some days before opening to the public. What's going to be your recommendation? We are a private company. The main product is the super materials and uh, we are going to apply such uh, super materials electromagnetic product and we can solve some core problem particularly the scattering lights problem this morning, I was excited. One reporter was introducing our product, and he said that uh, this product is the most challenging one of its kind. Our researchers and developers have been working tirelessly in our offices and finally making a breakthrough in this technology. We were working around the clock, trying to conquer the problem and finally, we made it. This theory of the product is really the world leading one. We are contributing. And a lot of uh, high end uh, facilities and materials are limited in usage. So, for us to make a breakthrough with such limitations, it's really difficult. And also, we have to replace the imported uh, equipment with the self developed ones. We have to get to the source of the problem. For example, we have to even consider the security of the supply chain. Our researchers are really great people. They are supportive of uh, the entire campaign. For every effort we make, we are contributing to boosting the combat capacity of these jets, and we would love to contribute more to the national defense. As you said, the researchers and developers couldn't sometimes talk the whole story because of the confidentiality agreement, but we share the same feeling. We would love to say thank you to all the researchers and scientists. Some viewers have no idea about what you do on a daily basis, but I'm thinking that they would all agree that we are proud. What's your words for the National Day? I would love to say that we are now living in a new era. We are cared by our motherland. I have a lot of friends now living abroad. They long for coming back to China. We are seeing a great China emerging, and as researchers and scientists, we are pleased to see this happen. And to all the scientists and researchers, I want to give my best wishes to them, and my best wish also goes to our motherland. I hope one day all of those results in the laboratory could be applied in the national defense. So happy birthday our motherland. Thank you. I hope everything goes well with you, and have a nice day. I think she just made the point. The scientists working in the front line have 
done a lot. Can I interview you? Sorry. Now let's move on. May I interview you? No. I was informed that now there will be another show, so let's give the microphone back. Dear friends, good noon. I am a reporter of CMG, Wu Guoning. Just now, with uh, our images, you have uh, seen the wonderful performance of the August 1st fleet. And now, from where I am standing, I am very close to those uh, airplanes. And we cannot move any closer according to the rules. Actually, from our camera, you can see that uh, the ground logistics people are maintaining the J-10 airplanes. Obviously, the way they are parking, they are in an orderly fashion, just like when they are in the air. On the Sina blog, a lot of uh, followers asked for customized services. For example, we've seen a lot of performances and equipment. Is it possible for us to know the pilots? No hurry. We're going to give you the opportunity. And on my opposite, just now, the spectators were cheering up happily for the pilots. The August 1st uh, flying fleet is really a symbol of Air Force. For you to get a better understanding of those J-10 jets, today I have invited Professor Wang Mingliang, a military expert, to introduce more. A professional will talk professionally. This morning I read the weather forecast saying that uh, the Land surface temperature is around 35 Celsius degrees, and the humidity is about 78 percent, and the velocity is about grade 3 to grade 4. For the pilots, when they are viewing the weather forecast, they have a different mentality. And what's the difference? They look at the meteorological conditions. And from the performance perspective, it's not the perfect meteorological condition, but I think it's still ideal for their flights. Today, from the flight perspective, they look at one important parameter. That's about visibility. The visibility today is not ideal for the moves in the air and uh, the localization. And the distance keeping is not the perfect visibility. But since our pilots have been trained for years, that's no problem. For those very difficult moves in the air, our spectators are really cheering up and applauding for them. And will this be confusing for the pilots? In the poor meteorological condition, the jets could manage even lower altitude, but for the safety's concerns, they may choose to elevate higher. And they have different plans when they fly over different regions, for example, above the spectator's region. And first and foremost, safety comes. And for the Air Force China, when they are flying in the air, they seem to be very confident. And where is the confidence coming from? Personally, I have a special relationship with this team. In the 1990s, I have uh, served three months here in this fleet. I flew well, but the jet was J-5. For the performance in the air, it was a good jet, but as a big military power, it's not there yet for the performance. But we had nothing else to do. 
in the 21st century, we changed to J10 for this performance. We were very excited for the change. I think the spectators feel the same. Generation 3 of J10 is independently developed. It's a combat jet. It's beautiful in the outlook, and it can give us overwhelming performances. It's magnificent. It shows us the equipment upgrading of the Air Force and the upgrading of the pilot's techniques. Every time the spectators watch the show, they are always excited. And as one member of the Air Force, you must be really proud. I could sense the pride in your words. And the August 1st of fleet has a long history in China. Formerly, it was established in 1962. And now it's one part of Air Force China. And there have been five reforms from J5, J6, to J5, and now to J7. Two series of J7, actually, till J10S. And this is actually a double seats jet. For double seats jets, the main functionality is to serve the training. The student and uh, the instructor sit together, and they have two separate controlling systems. Usually, the performing airplanes will adopt such double seats. And for the pilot sitting in the back, they could observe and be the backup. Sometimes, if there are some major dangers in the front, they could be the backup. And also, there is a division of labor between the two. So, since it's very difficult performance, they need high concentration and they need to be resolute in executing the instructions. So to guarantee the performance outcomes, we have this design. As the mainstream theory, J-10 has played a big role. What's the difference of those performing jets from that J-10 parking over there? The performing jets, J-10, they are series A, and that is series C. We have a evolving from A to C. It represents the 5G transformation. And from the combat perspective, J-10C is certainly superior than J-10A. And usually, we call the J-10C as the renovated third generation jet. From the outlook, they differ. It's just like a box. Hanging below the jet. Generation 4 airplanes adopt uh, pumps. On the tarmac, we could also see the Hongying team. On T Hongying team is operating the K8. Those jets are mainly used for the training of students in a complex conditions. It's um training plane. Hongying's performance is very special. And I asked 
And I learned that all the pilots on the Hong In K-8 airplanes are the trainers, the instructors. They're from the university. So for their performance, it's of special significance. They could be said as the descendants of the previous generation of instructors in northeastern China. 120 pilots were graduating from that university in northeastern China, and uh, they have served in the war against uh, the U.S. aggression in Korea before. So I think their performance these days are actually paying tribute to their ancestors, the veteran instructors. And just now we were watching the August 1st performance, and they had a special design that is to pay tribute to the martyrs on September the 30th. One pilot is walking towards us. We, requ we received uh, requirements uh, from uh, our commentators for an interview of the pilots. Now here there is one. You just finished your flight. Yes, I just got off board. And today is a special day, the Martyrs Commemoration Day. This is really an extraordinary event for us to be present in the air show. We are clear deep in heart mm -hmm. that uh, we could come to today because of the blood shed by our martyrs. We are performing, the spectators are watching, everyone is happy. Those are all because of those martyrs. We could never forget them. So today, we specially pulled the white smoke to honor them. So with the white smoke, you are paying tribute to the ancestors. Can I ask your age? I'm 35 years old. You look like in your 20s. You're a veteran pilot. What's the cumulative hours you have flown? 1,400 hours. Cumulative? Yes. Starting from 2006, K6. Now, I've flown for 1,400 hours. So, could you introduce about the criteria of selecting the pilots? Is there any threshold of uh, flying hours? The minimum is 800 hours. For J10, no less than 200 hours. For your exercise, is there anything special about your exercise in your fleet? Will your exercise be more difficult? I once worked in a different uh, entity in the combat. The similarity is both of them are part of the Air Force, but previously we would mainly serve the real combat. But now, since we're in the performance fleet, we are exercising and training for the show. And for the performance, the difficulty is mainly about the dense fleet in a short distance. And for the combat team, the difficulty is about uh, the combat tactics. So they differ in those ways. For the Chinese army men, there is also difference from overseas, for example, equipment. And they have different feelings for their equipment. Could you please take us for a tour to have a look at your devices? I'm not sure about uh, pilots overseas, but as long as uh, he is a pilot, uh, they certainly would have a deep feeling for their equipment in the air. Your, your destiny is interwoven with the equipment. You are self-reliant upon each other. We could uh, make the moves because of those equipment. 
This is like your teammate. But this is my first time to get so close to this jet. There are two series of uh, the performing planes. One is single seat, the other is uh, double seats. So usually where do you sit? I flew in a single seat airplane. This one plane is double seats. Usually you could choose either in the front or in the back. For single plane performance, they are usually number five and number six. And the pilots are now in the lobby. For the first four jets, those four are in the main fleet and number five, number six will separate from the remaining four in order to show the single plane performance. For example, the hovering, the oblique somersaults of the four planes and flowering of the four planes, the first of four will perform those. As to the f formation of six planes, according to the literature, there are only several meters distance between two planes. Even 0, 0 0.1 second of difference or a meter of difference will matter a lot. Yes, we need to pursue excellence. In the beginning, our instructor will teach us to control the distance, and gradually you will be able to control the distance after months of training, and then you can perform. In 2017, we started such a training of the for the show, and I performed in 2018. I flew for over 1,000 hours before, but since uh, such performance show is different from before, because of the short distance and because of the performance in pairs and um, in a fleet, it's more technical. So we still need to train for another one year in order to make the task. So you need to be bold and delicate. You cannot hesitate in the air for even one second. You have to be resolute in handling any emergency. Like you said, we have a very close difference. 0 0.01 second difference will be hugely different. So we need to be determined and resolute and careful. Those are all the qualities the pilots need to have. Previously, we thought Possibly in the jet, we could have a camera set. And then they say it's too dangerous, particularly for the special moves. You have to shoulder huge burden and pressure on you. There will be a lot of uncertainties. So you must uh, be physically strong. For pilots, they certainly have to be strong. And when you get off board, those logistics get on board to maintain the airplanes. The planes get maintained. How about your body? We must uh, keep fit by ourselves. As a pilot, you have to exercise every day. You do the exercise voluntarily. Maybe running, jogging. And sometimes we target at uh, some specific muscles to train them. Because there is a... Uh, heavy loading in the air without a special training, for example, the lumbar muscles, you cannot bear it. In your training, have you been overloaded? And have you blacked out? I think all of us did. It's a dangerous condition and you need to settle it. Maybe you need to let go of the handle a little bit and do some moves in order to fence against that load. And uh, you need a quick reaction. We will try to avoid it from happening. You need to wear some uh, protective clothes to fend off the load. And I'm sure about uh, the maximum load I can carry. So I will actively fight against the load 
if you do not have such a movement to fight against the load, then you will be caught off guard. So if you are prepared, it's not going to be too serious. Because I know very clearly about those movements to respond to the blackout. So usually we will certainly not gonna faint after blacking out. It's just about uh, one short time. How many years have you served in this fleet? Four years. So as a serving pilot, what's the significance of your team to the Air Force? We are like a window of Air Force. For combat teams, they need to be confidential. They cannot show their techniques to the Chinese people or people in the world at large. So we are like the window to show something and we can perform in air shows so that uh, the technologies could be learned by others. We can do all sorts of movements and in the international air shows, we can perform ourselves then the Air Force China will be learned by the international spectators. They will have a better understanding of China's Air Force, and they will learn that uh, uh, the Chinese Air Force and the pilots have very advanced equipment. Usually, even though they're not friendly towards China, they will certainly pay their all to China. This is really a day of dream coming true for our viewers interviewing a pilot and as we all know while you're flying in the air and doing the very difficult but beautiful moves you're not fighting alone you have a very strong team of uh, controllers and logistics on the ground those people are behind the scenes all the applause and flowers are to you in the air, but those logistics people are on the ground. So what do you want to say to them? We are close friends and brothers. While we are having excellent performances in the air, they are doing their bits. They are the ones holding our ladders while we are climbing higher. Without those holding your ladders, you could never make it in the air. So we're all integral parts of this team. We're indispensable from each other. We have about a dozen of pilots, but uh, the logistics people make 200. So even though they cannot make a show, we still want to thank them a lot. We are really brothers. Tomorrow is going to be the National Day holiday. And you will have to give performances for days to come. And uh, to all of those uh, spectators and viewers who love this show, what do you want to say? And also, we would love to thank you on behalf of all of us. So this is all for my interviews. See you later.
。好，这里是第十三届中国航展第三天，继续带您为我们来看到的是精彩的飞行表演。For the third day, and now we are seeing the Hong Ying team about to fly, and uh, Mr. Wang Mingzhi is with us to explain more. And this is the first group. There are eight jets for the show, and they are going to fly in two groups. This is the first four. It's about to take off. Four jets are flying together. It's of combat value. It's quick, and it's in large numbers. All eight are in the air, and they need to form in the air. And there are four stages of their performances. The two groups, each one composed of four, will take off, and then there will be. A combination of eight for the show, and in the third stage, there will be different combinations of movements in different numbers, and finally they will land in short、uh, air route. Next, we're going to see the eight jets performing together. For eight jets to perform, there will be a lot of possibilities. I just now asked. Mr. Wang, about the speed of the Red Falcon demonstration team, it's actually different from the previous fleet. Since those are the instructors' planes, they are certainly different from the combat jets. They are mainly for the training of the students. And.、Uh, They will use those planes for education purposes. Those instructors'、uh, planes have very high performance. And have they finished the formations? What is this shape? This is their typical move. It's、um, called the falcon, red falcon shape. They design this themselves. It's just like a red falcon, and that's the first shape they make today. It's quite hot today in Zhuhai, and at the noon time, many people gave up the lunch to watch the red falcon performance. They just now changed their positions. There is one chief jet in the front, and there are seven others tailing behind. And it seems like the chief jet is a little bit higher than the remaining seven. There will be some altitude difference between all of those、uh, jets, just for safety's purpose. And now they are pulling white smoke because it's an extraordinary day. The pilots of the Red Falcon. Team is also paying their honor to the martyrs with this special smoke. Eight planes are pulling the white smoke for the commemoration of the martyrs. There are basically five moves for eight planes. In the first two moves, they will perform all of those moves together, and then in the second stage, the eight planes are going to hover together. So it's very dense, and there will be some movements on one plane, and there will be hovering. For hovering, it's really difficult for eight of them. They need to keep a very accurate distance between all eight planes, and they need to have good communication and coordination. They need to be tough, and they need a long time of exercise. They are taking a turn. Yes, they are readjusting their positions to get ready for the next move. While they are taking this turn, they need to reposition themselves. Just now, they were paying tribute to the martyrs in a red falcon shape, and now they're going to change to the combat position.
看到整个的队形也是非常的错落有致啊。刚才王老师也是介绍了，高度差是保证。As introduced, the height difference is for safety purpose. The Red Falcon adopts the instructor's jets. It's called K-8. In 1998, it was introduced into Air Force for the basic training of the students. And uh, they just now flew over the spectators' platform, and they are coated in red, very reinforcing the blue sky. The red color shows the red jeans of Air Force and the pilots, and the white color on the jets reflect the aesthetics of the aviation industry against the blue sky the white clouds and with the red jeans of air force it's uh, really harmonious and uh, those planes are trying to reflect the special features of chinese air force in this new era so the eight planes finished uh, their performance in a combination and next there will be the hovering horizontally eight of them together yes the first five moves are going to be accomplished by eight of them particularly the hovering it's very difficult for eight to hover together because the innermost and outermost airplanes are having different trajectories in the air, but they have to fly in alignment, so they need very accurate coordination in order to have simultaneous performance. Are they taking formation? Yes, they have already taken the turn for the hover. It's also in a rhombus shape. They are right above us. This is a dart shape. It's very powerful. In such a limited space above the platform, they have to pilot the jets and to do the movements and turns in such limited space. It's really challenging. And then they change their shape from a dart to a rhombus again. So slight change of the shape. For Red Falcon demonstration team, it was established in January 2011. It's the first instructor's demonstration team and all of those pilots of those jets are instructors. Some of them are special flight. For example, the tier one pilots, 15 of them are tier one. And for years, they have been demonstrating the Air Force culture and uh, promoting the flight education. And uh, it is fair to say that uh, this Red Falcon demonstration team has become a forceful team to exhibit the capabilities of Air Force China. It's really a name card of Air Force China. And what's this shape now, rhombus? Right in front of the spectator's platform. It's hovering now. What is the shortest distance between the two planes? Three meters. They are adjusting positions. Now they are in a diamond shape at such high speed. The Red Falcon team is composed of the instructors, and those instructors will teach the students in the academy 
So they are certainly very technical, and their techniques will determine the levels of their students. With a good tutor, there will be good students as well. In the daytime, the instructors will teach their students in the cabins of the planes. The cabins are just their classrooms, so they could generate uh, a group of excellent students. Now they are pulling the white smoke again in white for this special day. They are honoring all of those martyrs who have sacrificed for China. Through our window, we could see clearly the whole performance. It is really satisfying to enjoy the show on the site. One plane separate itself from the fleet. So now this is the end of the fleet performance, and this is the stage three performance. There will be different combinations of moves. So two planes separate from the team. They are getting ready for the next stage. They are going to dash towards each other. According to Mr. Wang, this team is composed of eight planes. In the air, the shortest dif distance is only three meters. That is like the extremity. Just imagine, the pilots would have to conquer a lot of unimaginable difficulties. Some of them are about the control. Some are about uh, psychological conditions. For example, low altitude, the airflow. So in the entire flying process, they have to be 100 percent concentrated. Those are indispensable from their high techs on a daily basis. And you also need to have a full confidence and faith in your comrades. Just now the two planes dash towards each other, then they separate, and then they take a turn back. Another big move is about to come. They're going to cross by each other, pulling smoke, changing direction, and um, targeting each other, and then crossing by narrowly. Elevating, rolling, low altitude crossing by. Since it's a show of eight planes, those two will leave this site to leave room for the six other planes. So we are looking forward to the next stage performance of six planes. It's really a competition over the clouds. The two planes were flying towards each other. It's really exciting. And now here come six planes. They are rolling horizontally. They have taken two circles. The horizontal rolls are quite uh, demanding. They require good techniques of the pilots. The pilots will have to keep changing their angles, their speed. For example, the time point of uh, pulling the pressure lever. Now, those two are flying with the second airplane flying around the first one. So the first plane leaves behind a white smoke. That white smoke is like the axis for the second plane to surround. And since it is surrounding the first plane while they are hovering together, it's more difficult. They have to keep changing their trajectories. Uh, 
And flying around the axis is also acceptable in a real combat. It can guarantee that uh, the latter airplane can keep following the first airplane very closely. So this move is not just about uh, the show. It has some realistic significance in a combat. The planes of the Red Falcon team must be preparing for the next stage performance. Next, there will be one single plane or a pair of planes. Oh, here come the pair. Still surrounding the axis. They just now accomplish the surrounding around a curve. And now this is uh, surrounding a straight line. When they are flying around the axis, the remaining five airplanes are gathering together for the next stage. For Red Falcon, they are very accurate since they are instructors. They have to pass on their techniques to the future pilots, so they have to be very careful with their moves. Accuracy matters the most. So gradual turns, the first turn was made by two planes, and then they turn in different groups. Very beautiful. When the five planes form and take a turn, they seem to separate themselves from the team, but after the turn, they will get back to the fleet. So that's a formation capability. And all of those require teamwork and long exercise. You need to get back to an orderly formation. They need to readjust their positions. And next, single plane or a pair of planes. This is one single plane. You see a pause between rows. It's also about a test of their accurate control. The pilots must uh, work in harmony with uh, the plane in order to have accurate control. Again, three airplanes are flying around the axis of each other. Very narrow distance between the three. Mm. 
纯粹的漂亮。但实际上，我今天仔细看，特别是有人这样的专家坐在边上，我发现其实它这个拉烟是让我们看到它一个非常。So after pulling the smoke, if you observe, the smoke will gradually fade away. Four planes are flying. So four airplanes are flying around the smoke. They are really like a painting with a brush. It seems easy, but they need the strength. Those instructors are quite awesome in order to educate a team of young pilots. So generations of pilots are thanks to those instructors. It's still very hot today, but the spectators are quite enthusiastic. They are taking their cameras with them. Single plane. Each and every one of our pilots uh, is uh, one of their kind because they need to be very familiar with the planes and they need to be strong physically and uh, psychologically. And they need to have team spirit. And of course, they need to be proficient in piloting the plane. According to Mr. Wang, all of those pilots are instructors, so they also need to educate in the on the campus. They are very demanding, and uh, they have high requirements of themselves. Now, three planes are flying with a height difference. They are piling up each other. Such a flight mode must be very familiar in their daily exercises. Pulling white smoke again to honor the martyrs, crossing by and flowering. They also need to distribute their concentration when they are flying. They need to pay attention to the neighbor planes. They also need to pay attention to their own status and uh, the conditions in the air. Here are the two planes. They are going to dash towards each other. We have seen the hedging of single planes, but now this is about the two planes hedging against the other two. It's more difficult. For one single plane, it's flying at about 500 kilometers per hour. So when they are hedging against each other, the relative speed is 1,000 kilometers per hour. And uh, the one moment when they are nearing each other, it happens very fast. And then they need to quickly separate from each other. The K-8 airplanes must be well performing. Yes. 
For your information, the Red Falcon Air Demonstration Team is adopting the prevalent K-8 instructor's planes. In 1992, the planes were designed, and in 1994, they had their first flights. Now this is one single plane performance. Flying back. Elevation and turns. You could see a beautiful curve in the air. The remaining seven are making a formation again to prepare for the last but not least performance about flowering of seven planes. Somersault. Turns and diving down. Hovering, a beautiful curve. If the smoke doesn't disappear, it's going to be a very mysterious pattern in the air. What is the speed? 400 to 500 kilometers. The pilots must be enjoying the high speed. It's very exciting. The speed is unimaginable to an ordinary pe person. Are there any other moves? It's adjusting positions to prepare for the seven jets performance. It's the third day. Flowering of seven planes. It's a very beautiful seven lines of smoke in white. The pilots would have to consider the shapes of the team and uh, also the instruments. And uh, last move, the short uh, air route landing. They could land very quickly. For the short air route, it allows shorter time and lower altitude. So they have to land together the quickest. Now eight planes are ready to land. Okay. Hello everyone, this is Xi Jia, CGTN reporter here at the Zhuhai Air Show. Hmm? Sorry. Uh, here at the Zhuhai Air Show, and uh, yesterday I have shown you the CH4 and CH6, uh, their characteristics respectively, and today absolutely another big star here at the Zhuhai Air Show. It is this, this one behind me, 
AG 600. And today, together with me is um, on my honorable guest, Mr. Chen Haixin. Uh, Professor Chen is from um, the Aerospace School of Aerospace Engineering of Tsinghua University. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, say something to the audience? Yeah, uh, uh, good, good to know everyone. <laughs> okay, so um, Professor Chen, I have a, actually I have a question because uh, I've been here for like three days and uh, among all the medias on, on, on their top news, AG, AG 600 is always the top news and the focus. I want to know why it attracts so much attention. Uh, this is really a big airplane. Uh, it has a very strong capability. It can uh, take off and landing on the water, uh, which means if there's some accident, uh, for example, if a boat has some problem on the, uh, in the deep ocean, uh, we need a very quick response to, uh, for rescue. Uh, this, this type of airplane can uh, fly directly to the spot and land, uh, landing on the water and uh, float on the waters. The, uh, so people can execute the uh, rescue. Uh, yeah. uh, it's very, uh, uh, very convenient for the such type of uh, uh, mission. Uh, it's another uh, capability. It's, it can drop water on, on the fire. So this time, uh, on this uh, year's air show, uh, the airplane uh, had a, a performance to drop water on the... Uh, I, I heard this uh, nine tons of water on the spot. Uh, in the case of uh, fire, uh, for example, the forest fire or something, uh, this airplane can find a lake and uh, suck water into its, uh, uh, its bay and uh, fly onto the spot and drop the water onto the fire uh, and uh, how to extinguish the, the fire. So it's very uh, important for the, uh, how to say, the ci uh, civilian uh, purpose. So. Is it the first of this kind uh, within China? I mean, the civilian use uh, to like fi firefighting function. Uh, I'm not very sure, but uh, before we have uh, how say the the bomber, uh, we call it uh, water bomber, uh, amphibious uh, bomber, uh, which can also uh, do this kind of job. But uh, this one is a newly designed one. Uh, it, ha it has a larger size, larger capability, uh, and uh, modern uh, devices. So uh, we believe it can do this type of jobs uh, much uh, with much higher efficiency and effect. Uh, and how high can it reach? And uh, what about the speed? Uh, I'm not very sure the. Parameters maybe the speed can be a uh, 500 kilometers per hour, or something like that. Uh, it has a uh, max take take off weight of uh, 60 ton. Uh, if if it take off from the water, uh, the ma maximum uh, uh, take off weight is uh, five, uh, 55 tons. Uh, the, the, it's really a big one because the, the, the wind span uh, is uh, 30, 39 meters. So uh, a little bit larger than the Boeing 737 airplane. So uh, it's really a larger one. So. Let, let us take a close look at the design of this, the principle of design of this aircraft. Yeah, yeah. Any characteristics? Yeah, so you, uh, if you look at the bottom of the airplane, you, you can find it has a shape of, uh, like the boat. So it, it will reduce the drag uh, on the water. So it can uh, how to say, uh, take off from the water, accelerate, and then take off from the water. If, if it drops onto the water, so you can see this, uh, the bottom of the, uh, of the boat. It has a specially designed shape. Uh, when it land on the on the water, the how say the, the, the water will spill, oh. 
uh, just uh, down, <laughs> spill up and down to, to the water, to back to the water. It will not reach the wing and the engine. So that's very important for, uh, how to say, the, the amphibious uh, airplane. And the wing is uh, on, the, on the top of the fuselage. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also for the purpose of, of avoiding the, the water be, uh, how to say, touch the engines, touch the propellers. Uh, this airplane has four uh, turbo, pro uh, turbo propeller engines. Uh, it's uh, really uh, powerful one because uh, on the water the drag is relatively larger than the, uh, from the runway so it, it needs a larger uh, uh, say thrust. Uh, on the wind tip there are two uh, floating bodies uh, so it's, 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 uh, people can imagine if on a drop on the water uh, land, landing on the water uh, if the wing uh, if the, the airplane uh, how to say has a not not very correct uh, angle. Uh, this float body can help the the airplane keep the balance. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you you can see that landing gear. Uh, it's a relatively simple one uh, because uh, this airplane is mainly uh, landing and take off from the water. So. That that's uh, wheels are for the how say the, the runway take take off. Uh, it's it's not the uh, it's not very important for this airplane because uh, it's uh, it's a amphibious airplane. Yeah. Okay. So um, all I can imagine is that um, this usage or the function are used among like the forest fire something like this. Yeah. But what about in the scenario of warfare? So what uh, can it do? Warfare. Uh, so people may have the memory of a very famous, uh, I'll say, the movie uh, when the Japanese uh, in the World War Two, when the Japanese guys shoot the American uh, airplanes because those American airplanes are dropping bombs on the Japanese boats. So they, uh, the Japanese boats has uh, has uh, some guns. And uh, shoot the, how they shoot the airplane down. Mm -hmm. So when the Japanese guys was celebrating the, the their their nice shooting, uh, uh, amphibious airplane landed on the water and uh, rescued the, uh, the 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 pilot of American. So that's very useful. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in the modern war, uh, such a huge type uh, size airplane and uh, relatively low speed uh, that will be uh, how say very easy to be shot down. So uh, we need to find some more scenario for, for this airplane. Yes. I think, uh, according to what you said, uh, my impression is that the biggest um, mission for this aircraft is to save, to do the rescue work, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, uh, if, for example, if there is submarine accident uh, in, in some uh, relatively far away uh, in, in the ocean. Uh, we relatively need such kind of airplane because uh, it can reach the the, the how to say the boat uh, very closely and do all the other jobs. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, next, I think another big star here, uh, as I mentioned on opening day, is the Wing Long Two drone. Uh, that is also one of the newest technology or and achievements um, showed here. <laughs> Yes, showed here uh, during the Zhuhai Air Show, and the Elon, uh, the Wing, Wing Long Two drone is just two minutes walk distance from here. So let me show you closely. So that that Wing Long Two drone is a real aircraft, right? Yes, yes. It's uh, how say uh, this time. This time the uh, the company and the Air Force can have a very open attitude to the how say to our. Uh, uh, I'll say the fence. <laughs> yeah. so. And uh, 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 as far as I know, uh, almost more than a hundred aircrafts are displayed here, right, on the playground. Yes, yes. So uh, it's very interesting that uh, uh, it, I'm not very sure why they divi divided this uh, playground uh -huh. uh, several blocks. Uh, in my understanding, uh, they put some 
Air Force airplanes together and uh, also some airplanes from the uh, how to say from the companies that means it's it's not not yet entered the service Maybe they put it in any kind of category, right? Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. So in this this area, we, we can see a lot of a uh, uh, lot of uh, UAVs. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the Winglong Ten. Uh, this is Winglong Two. This is Winglong Two, right? Mm. So uh, right behind us is the famous star here at the Zhuhai Air Show, the Winglong 2, and it is an uh, unmanned aerial vehicle, right? Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, and because yesterday we have uh, introduced the uh, uh, CH4 and CH6 to our <laughs> audience, and uh, what, are, what are the differences between them? Uh, I think uh, this, this one, uh, the size may be a little bit smaller than the CH4. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, uh, this is uh, from uh, how say the Chinese uh, Air Force uh, UAV, so it has uh, relatively higher configurations. Uh, the internal devices are how to say had a, I, I believe it it should have a, uh, how to say better uh, quality, better performances, uh, something like that. So you, you can see it has uh, uh, several pylons mm. with uh, different types of uh, uh, weapons. So uh, we call this, uh, how to say, the, the Cha Da Yi Ti O, means uh, surveillance uh, and uh, attack. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it has a very long time of endurance, mm. uh, can fly on the uh, in the sky for 20 hours, more than 20 hours. Mm -hmm. So if there is a war field, uh, it can be high above and see what's, what's happening and uh, some type of uh, targets need to be attacked. It will uh, how they drop the weapons from its own. Uh, in, in before, we have the surveillance airplane and when it finds something uh, need to be uh, bombed or something, it will call another aircraft to, oh. to, to get here to, okay. to drop the bomb. Okay. It, 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 it's not a time sensitive mm -hmm. uh, mission. So this type uh, of aircraft, it, it has its own bombs. So that will uh, make the uh, efficiency uh, much higher. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know what? I, I found that this one, the, the Wing Long 2, mm -hmm. the export order, it seems that it, it, it ranks among the first yes, uh, yes, yes. within domestic or the domestic UAVs. Yes. Why is that? Because it's uh, cheaper? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think it's cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as I just said, it has a, a higher standard of uh, quality, higher standard of capability. So it might be uh, even, I'll say, expensive. But uh, because of its uh, performances, uh, it, it has a very, very nice, uh, how to say, uh, achievement on the export. Uh, because this type of uh, airplane is very important in the modern uh, war. Uh, so as, as everyone knows, uh, in the how to say, Middle East, in the, how to say, the uh, uh, a, a, a media, uh, something like that. Uh, in several recent wars, uh, the the UAV has shown very strong capability and very high efficiency in uh, for the. Uh, if, so you know, uh, if you have such kind of uh, airplane, uh, just like uh, you have, uh, how say, weapon bay on the sky, and you can. You can call the, the attack uh, fire uh, as you want, so that's very uh, very uh, convenient. Yeah. Without causing any casualty, right? Uh, uh, th that means you ha must have very accurate bombs mm -hmm. or very accurate uh, information. So you see, it has a, 
uh, how to say, uh, the optical electrical bay, uh, how to say, below the head. Uh, this will give the capability of uh, uh, of finding the target and uh, determining whether it's a, it's a civilian or the, the, the enemy. So. <coughs> So uh, it can be transferred back to the, how say, the, the uh, surface uh, station, mm -hmm. the, the ground station, and the people there can control this airplane or, or determine whether this target is should be attacked. Mm -hmm. So you, so whether there will be a how say, civilian casualty uh, is determined by the accuracy or the how say, even uh, whether it's cracked or not. Uh, of of this type of devices and and the whole chain of uh, communication. Yes. And I have another very maybe very silly questions. Uh, within the control room, uh, normally how many people are there uh, to control this kind of UAV? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe that that will be a how say control control room. Uh, I mean, uh, the control uh, room. They, this is automatic, right? Because uh, they, yeah, yeah, the I they press a button and they, it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, on this uh, year's uh, Zhuhai Air Show, mm -hmm. uh, this type of uh, aircraft has shown a very, uh, very interesting capability. It can start the engine and uh, go on the ground, taxi to the uh, runway mm -hmm. and take off uh, fully automatically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it, but it does have a uh, uh, control room, uh, maybe two we call it uh, the pilots okay. uh, stay in that control room, enjoying the air conditioners, uh, see the screens, and control this uh, airplane. It can, it can take over the, 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 the control. It has, uh, how to say, the, the uh, control pod, uh, the, how to say, the thrust uh, handles, something like the real airplane. But it, but this type of uh, airplane uh, has a very, has a very uh, large, long time of endurance. So people do not need to uh, pay full attention on the airplane because it has a really strong automatically control uh, capability. And what about these missiles? Like uh, we, we can see uh, bigger ones or smaller ones. So <laughs> when to use this? All those different types of missiles. So you can see uh, it has uh, laser uh, guided missile uh, bombs. Mm -hmm. uh, that that should be an anti ship mm -hmm. uh, bomb, uh, something like that. So all of them are uh, how to say that we we call the accurate. Uh, guided uh, mm -hmm. weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe those two are the air-to-air -air, mm -hmm. uh, missile, uh, which means this type of aircraft have some capability of mm -hmm. self-defensing. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's a fighter uh, is uh, intercepting it, uh, it can fight back. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, I heard that uh, during the flood in, in Henan province, mm -hmm. this, this airplane uh, take, uh, took off from the Guizhou and uh, flew to uh, Henan and provided the telecommunication for the people there. Uh, that's also another important uh, mission for this type of aircraft uh, because I, I just mentioned the communication chain. Uh, if, if it need to uh, I'll say conduct a mission, it should have a very strong communication uh, capability to the ground. So this uh, makes it possible to help the, the people on the ground uh, in, in disaster or in accidents. Yeah. Yes, thank, thank you very much, uh, Professor Chen. He really knows everything about this um, AG600 and Wenglong 2 drone and all the, I think all the aerospace engineering knowledge. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Professor Chen. And bye -bye. yes, that's all for our live streaming today. Maybe see you tomorrow. Bye.